In 2023, with the very poor performance of no profit, low cash flow hype stocks, I like the stock. Investors have learned that it's really important to consider high cash flow, stable, well known companies to invest in. I'm a big believer in dividend growth stocks, and if I was going to start all over again with just £1,000, Here's the stocks that I'd probably get started with. Please remember though that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is just more information for you to maybe go out and build a portfolio using lots of different sources. But if you do enjoy this video, please feel free to give me a big subscribe so you can see more videos in the future. Now, if I was starting with £1,000, I'd probably split it up into 10 different types of stocks just to spread the risk about a bit. I'd focus on high quality, great financials and stellar track records. I'm looking for companies with moats and most of all, I'd be looking for companies that people like you or me would use every day. I'd use mostly well-known companies so there's more chance I understood how the businesses work. The single, the single most important thing to me in the stock market for anyone is to know what you own. And if you can't explain, I'm serious, you can't explain to a 10 year old in two minutes or less why you own a stock, you shouldn't own it. I think this is a simple way to invest by using companies that we use day to day. I'm not looking for high dividend yields or even great valuations at this point. This is a portfolio that I'm going to set, generally forget, but really I'm going to be looking to hold this for over 40 years. I'd expect these companies to still be around even after I'm dead. That's, that's the level we're looking at here. Of course, index funds are brilliant here. They are the most simple way to invest. I invest in the all world index, VWRL, but for this video, I'm going to assume that you want to invest in some companies. I think I'd start by investing into a financial stock, a bank. Everyone has to use money at present and for this stock, I would look to the US. I, I don't really like UK banks. JP Morgan have recently moved to the UK with their Chase Bank and Chase Bank is in the pockets of so many Americans. It's really a bank staple there in America. JP Morgan passes all the solvency test scores and it has a dividend paying 2.9%. I'd be happy here to own JP Morgan for another 100 years and I really do think it could go that long. Next, I'd like to look at a consumer staple stock. And here in the UK, there's nothing bigger than Unilever. Unilever will be everywhere in your house and even deep, deep inside you. Mm. It sells some of the most well-known brands all over the world. And it doesn't look like people are slowing down their buying of well-known brands. Unilever produces a ton of cash. It's 3.4% dividend is well covered by that cash. And again, this is another stock I still think you could own in the next 50 years. On a similar note to this, I'd also look to the US and buy one of the largest meat processors in the world, Tyson Foods. Tyson Foods, again, is one of those companies that finds its way into the majority of the world's bellies. It does this by processing and packaging much of the world's chicken, beef, and pork products. Meat consumption is continuing to rise globally, no matter what the vegetarians say. Tyson Foods will likely still be delivering meat in some form in the next 30 years, and it'll probably still be delivering that 2.9% fully covered dividend. Next, I believe everyone should have exposure to the semiconductor market. It's okay to not know what a semiconductor is or how a semiconductor is made, as long as you know that they're in everything you touch. They're in your phones, your cars, even in this screen that you're watching this video on. 90% of all digital semiconductors worldwide originate from a company called ASML. ASML is the definition of a moat. It has a machine that other companies just cannot replicate. It only pays a small 1% dividend, but we don't care about dividend yield here. We care about its growth. The total return here over the next 20 years really could be great and that's why I'm heavily invested in ASML. Easy buy for me. Next, I want to look towards healthcare. Now there's plenty you can buy in healthcare, but just for this video for our British audience, I'd probably be looking at the largest FTSE 100 stock, AstraZeneca. You may have heard a lot about this company over the past three years, but what you probably don't know about AstraZeneca is it produces so much medication, everything from keeping your nan's heart going to keeping your dad's dick hard. 
AstraZeneca does it all. It's got a lot of cash, does have quite a high payout ratio, but it does pay a 1.8% dividend, and th this company is going to be around for a while. I believe all investors should have some form of exposure to the real estate market. Lots of us have houses or second houses, we're in rental, but the easiest way to get into the real estate market is through a REIT. Personally, I'm going to pick two here. Here in the UK, I would pick Seagro. If you've ever driven up and down a motorway and seen one of those buildings at the side, it's very likely that it's owned by Seagro. It runs logistic warehouses and most importantly, data centers. And in the US, I'd classically put £100 into Realty Income, the monthly dividend company. It literally wants to grow its dividends monthly over the long period. It's, it's kind of its mission. And it shouldn't be punished for wanting to do this because REITs are supposed to pay out all of their earnings to their investors. They're supposed to give you the rent. And that comes to you in the form of the dividend. When you're investing in the US, you cannot ignore the mega caps. For this one, I'd choose Microsoft. Microsoft, I think, is only one of two or three AAA credit rated companies. Not only that, it's showing long term dividend growth at 1.2% right now, but there is so much more to come from Microsoft. Another important day-to-day -day sector that I would like to be exposed to is insurance. Everyone's got to have insurance. If you don't have it, it's pretty much illegal here in the UK. So the insurance market is likely to have some sort of pricing power. In the UK, a lot of people would choose Aviva, but here I would like to talk about legal in general, which is a big favorite in our Discord. Legal in general pays out a whopping 9.5% dividend yield, which is higher than inflation right now or it's close, it's probably close. The dividend appears to be completely covered by its excess cash, not to mention it holds onto a huge amount of UK pensions, which makes it pretty much a staple of the UK forever. Maybe that's not a good subject right now. Ugh. But if you do think the UK is still going to be a livable place in the next 100 years, then legal in general is likely to be a part of that. And it was quite hard to choose the last position in this portfolio. There's a lot of stocks that could go in here, to be honest. But I decided to choose something sweet with Mondelez. I fucking love chocolate and Mondelez owns the best brand of chocolate on the planet, among plenty of other sweet brands. This stock did cut its dividend for about three years in 2008, but since 2012, it's back and dedicated itself to dividend growth. It even historically outperforms the S&P 500. I love this sweet dividend stock to get that dividend snowball growing. There's plenty of other stocks that I could have put in here. McDonald's, Pepsi, KLA, a three that come right off the top of my head that I would happily own forever. The key to owning this portfolio now would be to keep building out these positions with regular monthly deposits, all while continuing to look out for new companies that you like, brands that you use, and things that you just generally keep in contact with every single day. The more companies you add to this, the more diversified it gets. But most importantly, the message that I'd leave for myself here is that I need to keep buying and stick at it for a good 40 years. We're looking here at starting this portfolio with a thousand pound initial investment and the dividend yield is 3%. That means that the dividends that come in, if you reinvest them back into your portfolio, you will get 3% compound every year. And if we keep at this for another 40 years with just a 500 pound a month deposit, we will end up with 466,344 pounds. That's within the 40 years and that is just by investing the dividends. We haven't counted here the complete total return or the capital appreciation that comes with it as well. These companies, while being great dividend growth stocks, are also extremely good compounders in their stock price as well. And I have in my portfolio on Trading 212 many, many different companies that I am continually buying into. These all make up different parts of my portfolio, different weightings inside my portfolio. And as their stock price goes down, I will add a little bit more. I 
I don't stop buying just because the price has gone down. I only really stop buying like Tyson Foods if their weighting inside my portfolio goes a little bit too high for my own risk. This portfolio is a little more advanced than the portfolio that I've just given you. I like to consider myself a little bit of a value investor as well. And I try to buy these companies while they're a little bit undervalued or at least what I consider as a little bit undervalued. But I still own many of the companies in this portfolio that I've just given you. ASML, I'll keep buying all of the time. Seagrow, I'm not buying at the moment because I've spent way too much money on it, even though that's growing quite considerably at the moment also. And I also own the Vanguard FTSE All World ETF and the Vanguard FTSE Emerging Markets. I currently have a portfolio value of 47,434. That is gonna go up quite considerably over the next couple of months as I start to drop a lot more money into this portfolio. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I will see you on the next update.